Well, welcome everyone to the Bamboo Lab Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley, and for the better part of the past 26 years, I've had the honor of working alongside and coaching some of the world's top performers. And what we're doing here today and every day is bringing these ideas and strategies and thoughts and wisdom directly to you. If you feel like you're that hamster stuck on the wheel and you're spinning around and not going anywhere, then you've landed in the right spot. The Bamboo Lab podcast is written, created, and broadcast for all you strivers, thrivers, and survivors out there. Well, some updated statistics today as of the 26th of July, 2022, which is the date of this broadcast. We are now being followed and listened in six continents, 22 countries, 46 of our states of the United States, and 554 cities around this great nation. I'm going to read one heart letter today that seems very heartfelt. This is in reference to the episode we did two weeks ago with the Superman, Sean Ravey. This text came through and it said, wow, that podcast was outstanding, boys. Jesus Christ, I just read chapter 24 of your book, Sean, and I had no idea about any of that. I am sitting here literally with tears in my eyes and a lump in my throat. How you persevered and navigated all of that as a youngster, then took on all the forensic interviews of abused kids later in life, is a true testament of your character and mental toughness. You have already endured way more than most. It's time to tell your story and live your best life. Much respect and love to both of you. I'm very proud to call you my friend. Whew, that's a great one. All right, this episode, even though it will be by broadcast and streaming a little bit later than this goes out and is dedicated to my little pal, my cub, my grandson, Jack, as he celebrates his first birthday on this earth today. It seems like he's been around forever, but it's only been 12 months and it has been the greatest 12 months of my existence. I love you, little man. And I hope as you get older, you listen to these podcasts and learn the wisdom shared through my guest, and sometimes through Grandpa B himself. I love you, buddy. Let's dissect. Well, our guest today had to cancel and reschedule due to a um, technical issue with her uh, technology, so I decided to wing it and do a monologue today. And it's going to be in reference to a couple of episodes I did back on May 14th and May 21st, a two-part series on the 11 Laws of Food and Poison. Your life is a bus. And as I sit here broadcasting today, I'm looking at a little toy bus that sits on my desk. And it reminds me every day that this represents my world, my existence. What I mean by this is your bus, your life being a bus means that you have to have the right people on the bus. You have to kick the wrong people off the bus. You have to get the people in the right seats. You have to make sure you have the right driver and you have to make sure you're going in the right direction. Probably the greatest metaphor you can think of for our existence on this earth. I look at life sometimes as we're building a kingdom. If you look at all the people around you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your customers and clients, your boss, your neighbors, you're, they're all part of your kingdom. And you're sole focus is to build the most incredible, the strongest kingdom in the land. Not always easy to do. Sometimes it requires very difficult decisions. And it recalls very tough conversations. It forces us to get out of our shell and out of our comfort zone. But it's all worth it. Because the only thing that matters is that kingdom and that bus. You have a responsibility, in my opinion. We all do. We have a responsibility to the loved ones in our world, to our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and beyond our legacy. We have the responsibility to become the person that changes things, that repairs things that pushes and moves and drives that bus forward in the right direction. 
And like when we were children, the school bus driver had that mirror above him or her. And they would look down at us with that judging, those judging eyes quite often. And it made most of us sit up straight. And when that bus has turmoil in it and kids are running and muck and screaming and yelling and jumping around and picking on each other, all it does is it diverts the driver's attention to what he or she should be doing, which is moving forward in the proper direction and in a safe manner. Sometimes our lives have people in it that run amok, that cause unnecessary challenges, that distract us. And as painful as it is, it's in those moments you have to make a very serious choice. When you have those people in your world, you have to ask yourself three questions. Can I continue to tolerate this? Can I do anything to change it? Or do I need to make sure I just get out of it? Change it, accept it, or leave it. If you're really taking the responsibility factor seriously, you can't accept it. Because when you accept poison and toxin in your world, it does nothing but divert your eyes off the road ahead. It only does, it does nothing but divert your, your attention away from the people who deserve it in your world, in your life. And what I've learned over the course of my existence so far is you can't really change it. Another person's behavior is usually beyond your control, even though you might have a little influence over it. But for the most part, it's futile. So the real only choice is you have to leave it. You have to leave and walk away from situations and behaviors and people who do nothing but bring you down. We know who those people are in our world. We all, we've talked before that when you have an interaction with another human being, it is either positive or it is negative. It is never neutral. The exchange of information and, and, and communication and interaction between two human beings is nothing but an exchange of energy. And energy can never be neutralized. It is either positive or it is negative. So I want you to think of the people in your world in your life, who when you are with them and when you walk away from them, you feel like a better human. You feel stronger, more confident, more at peace, maybe a little wiser for them. They lift you up. They increase your sense of self-worth. I would recommend you take a minute and write those people down. These are the individuals we must cherish. We must, in fact, hold them closely in our world, celebrate them, support them, and at times challenge them, and allow them to do the same for you. Now I want you to think of the antithesis. Think of those individuals in your world and in your life that when you are with them or when you are done communicating with them, you feel less you feel weaker, maybe torn down, beaten up, berated, belittled. Your sense of self-worth has decreased. I would recommend writing those people down on a piece of paper as well. And now you have to decide, what do I do with these lists? Well, we already discussed the first list. These are the people we spend more time with. We honor them. The second group, you can either do one of two things. You can completely shut them out of your world because they are the distracting kids in the back of the bus. Or you can just migrate slowly and spend more quality time with the positives. We only have so much time and energy and resource in our world. So the more you give to the food and nourishing people, Naturally, you're going to have less time, energy, and resource to give to the negative, toxic people in your world. This is not easy. But to quote my amazing son, Dawson, 
He said, Dad, when you clear the sheep out of your life, now you get to hang with only the lions. That's powerful, powerful shit. See, our role in life is very, very, very simple. It's to always monitor our own behavior and monitor what we accept in other people's behavior. And when we do that, our primary role is to associate with people who increase your sense of self-worth. And you, therefore, increase their sense of self-worth. Now, that doesn't always mean telling them they're doing a great job and rah-rah and add a boy and add a girls on a consistent basis. Yeah, that's part of it. But it comes down to the three attributes I mentioned a few moments ago. We must associate primarily, if not solely, with individuals who together you support one another. When times are down, you're there, they're there. They're leaning on you, you're leaning on them. You're helping, they're helping. Sometimes we're propping them up or they're propping us up. We must be around supportive people and support them back. And we also must be around people who we celebrate together. The victories, the wins in our lives. They're there celebrating with us for big events and small events. And we're there doing the same for them. And then third, we must surround ourselves with people who challenge us. And therefore, we challenge them. Life isn't solely about being around fun people. I tell you what's fun? Winning in life. That's fun. Winning in life, as Ed Milat says, is more fun than fun is. And we need people who challenge us, and therefore we challenge them back for us to win in life. So who is it out there in that select group of people you have that you can really say, Together, we support one another. We celebrate together. And by God, we challenge the hell out of each other. Negative things happen. They just do. I'm a very flawed man. And you're a very flawed human. That's just the natural course of being mortal. We make mistakes. We mess up. We fall down. We, stay, we say stupid things. We do irrational things. We have irrational thoughts and feelings and habits. We're still all trying to conquer those irrational fears that carry us through the day and destroy us in the end. But that's okay. It's okay to be flawed and it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to associate yourself with people who make mistakes. To a point. Multiple studies have shown that for every negative interaction between two human beings, there have to, has to be 2.9013 positive interactions in order for that relationship to continue to move forward. That's how scientific this became, these studies. 2.9013. So primarily, primarily it's a three to one ratio. I don't think that's good enough. I think as a human being, our role, my role and your role is to have five or six positive interactions with every person we associate with on that positive list for every one negative. Because we know there are going to be negative interactions. You're going to say something stupid. You're going to do something stupid. You're going to hurt someone. That's going to happen. But as long as you have a strong deposit in that other person's emotional bank account because of all of your other positive, amazing, good attributes and habits and things that you've done or said to them, you're going to be okay. The relationship can, can continue to flourish. Where the real problem lies is when we are associating with people 
who have three or four or five negative interactions with us to everyone positive. And then when you call that person out, they instantly focus on, well, look at what I did for you. Look at what I said to you. That one positive. They're not a, they're not at all considering the four or five or six negatives. And whether this hurts or not, no matter how close you are to that individual, you will never have a strong relationship with that person when there are more negatives to positive. Your life will never con- will never flourish flourish as it could. You will never reach that reach that true peak identity you are destined to live. You will never reach those high peak performances in life if you continue to associate with people of that nature. Now, I'm not here to say that those people are bad people. They're just bad for you. We all have a distinct personality and style and characters and and values. And sometimes theirs don't jive with us. And that's okay. There are 7 billion damn people on this planet. Why did you choose to associate with the people you chose to associate with? looking at the positives and the negatives. There's nearly an unlimited amount of friends and people you can call family and clients and work associates and neighbors and bosses that you can choose from. Why do you choose yours? The positive ones and the negative ones. Give yourself a good audit. What I have learned from my own behavior and from studying people for the past quarter century is that when we associate primarily with food style people or maybe solely with them, it's because we feel we deserve it. We know we have earned the status in life and we expect to be respected by the people we associate with. When we do that, we have an increased sense of self-worth more self-confidence. We feel like we are honoring our true character and our integrity. But when we associate primarily or solely with negative, toxic people, there's a reason for that too. And that reason is low sense of self-worth, low self-esteem, constantly challenging your character and integrity. And when you associate with those toxic people more and more every day, every moment, your sense of self-worth decreases. Your confidence goes down. Your character is blemished. And vice versa. The more you associate with nourishing food style people, those positives on your list, your sense of self-worth increases. Your confidence skyrockets. Your character and integrity are now matching your decision-making. People are really pretty simple. Sometimes we try to overcomplicate and complexify, if that's even a word, human beings. And it's pretty simple. We all want four primary things. And everything you do and everything I do every day is subconsciously or sometimes consciously we are doing those things because we want these four things. We want to be loved. By God, we want to be loved. We want to be understood. Maybe not agreed with, but understood. We want to be respected and we want to be appreciated. Loved, understood, respected, appreciated. Who in your life do you show those four qualities to? Who in your life do you make a conscious decision and effort to show them that they are worthy of love, that you understand them, whether you agree with them or not, that you do respect them, and that you do appreciate them? And also, who shows those four qualities to you? 
stay with us. We'll be right back. Get the latest insights from top mortgage pros on Mortgage Connects, a podcast by MGIC. We interview thought leaders from across the industry to share their wide-ranging expertise and candid views on critical market developments and current housing trends. Our guests reveal highly effective marketing and referral strategies, training tips and best practices, and what you can expect from the mortgage market in the future. Hear from experts like best-selling author Todd Duncan, U.S. Bank's Lenny McNeil, and Freddie Mac's Danny Gardner. Listen to Mortgage Connects on your favorite app or at MortgageConnects.com today. You know, we tend to look at people in a very two-dimensional level. Not necessarily our closest friends and family, but oftentimes we we have people in our the out, the second layer of our onion so to speak, those people who are kind of on the second tier fringe of our life. And sometimes those people some people who are actually on the outside fringe. And we don't draw them in because we see them just quite frankly on a two-dimensional level, up down sideways. If you want to bring in more quality people, because when you bring in more quality people, you, by nature, you eradicate and push out the negative people. So if you want to bring in quality, positive people, start observing the people on the fringe of your life. The person who sits a few offices down, the people you see at the restaurant every Thursday when you go to dinner, a neighbor that you wave to. And start to observe them and look at them from the third dimension. Ask yourself things like, where did they come from? Where do they want to go in life? What is their current need? Hey, can I help them with that? What do they worry about at night? What do they sing about? And what do they dream about? Those questions can help us to see the fringe people in our world from a deeper perspective. And sometimes when you ask those questions and you get those answers by observation and and communication and interaction with them, you find an amazing person, a person who can have a dramatic impact on your existence, on your family's life, on your career, on your goals, on your dreams. But don't just ask those questions of the people on the fringe. Sometimes we have the people who are closest to us, our partner in life, our husband, wife, children, mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, nieces, nephews, best friends. We don't even know the answers to those questions. Life is about the bus. You got to get the right people on. And you got to eradicate and kick the wrong people off sometimes. You got to make sure those people on the bus are in the right seats. You got to make sure that you're driving and that you're driving in the right direction. But once you do, you still have to make pit stops. Because sometimes you realize there's a person on the side of the road as you're driving by that, wow, that person belongs in my bus. And sometimes a person you thought belonged in your bus 23 miles down the road, you realize they're distracting me. I keep having to look up in the mirror. They're making noise. It's unnecessary. And either you have to get them in the right seat on the bus because maybe they're in the wrong seat or you have to get them off the bus. Our bus is not a stagnant river or a stagnant pond. I'm sorry. It's a fast flowing river. People come in, people leave. One of my favorite movies is um, uh, Stand By Me, a Stephen King novel. And at the end, the narrator says, you know, friends are like busboys in a restaurant. And there's some truth to that. We have friends for seasons, we have friends for reasons, and we have friends for life. And they're all okay. But the ones that are friends for life whether it's a friend or a family member or a client or a coworker or a boss or a neighbor, whatever you want to call them, hold dearly to them. Hold on to them, wrap your arms and your legs around them. And by nature, when you do that, some of the negative people, 
that you have, the toxic people that are draining you are going to just phase out. It's all about getting out of that comfort zone. The comfort zone, as I have stated before, is the strongest gravitational force in the universe. And it takes a lot of courage and guts and fortitude and sisu and grit to expand that comfort zone. And sometimes it's a little addition by subtraction. You got to say goodbye to bad people, bad behavior or people who are toxic to you. And you have to say hello to better behavior, better decisions and people who are nourishing to you. I do believe in the statistics that have come around on my or across my desk multiple times over the past 10 years. That is 26% of people are engaged in their jobs in this world. They love their jobs. They're positive. They're trying every day to become better, to reach that true peak identity and, and, and play in that highest level. So they, they know what their butter is. If you want to refer back to a previous episode of the podcast, 55% are disengaged, meaning they're good people. But they're stuck on that hamster wheel and they're spinning and they don't know how to get off. And 19% are actively disengaged. They're poison. They're toxic. And sometimes they are a wolf in sheep's clothing. They might look the part, play the part, speak the part, but they don't act the part. And I believe that those statistics are true across the board, not just in the workforce, but in our lives as well. We have 26% of the people in our world who are really there for us. They celebrate, they support, they challenge us. But there are 55% of people who could possibly be a candidate for your life, a better friend, a better lover, a better boss, a better client, a better coworker, a better neighbor. But we have to, we have to dig for those people. We have to look at them from that third dimension, put on the 3D glasses and ask yourself some questions to get to know them better. And I do believe 19% of the people in our, in our current world, somewhere in that onion that, ex- that surrounds us and those layers, 19% of them are toxic. They are poisonous. Now, maybe they're not necessarily bad people. They might be nourishing to other people, but to you, they're toxic. Cut the strings. It'll be the most difficult yet the most meaningful and highly impactful decision you will ever make in your life. You cannot live a positive life when you associate with negative people. Good luck. I've tried. Everybody I know has tried. and Everybody I know has failed, including myself. Don't waste your time, your energy, or your resources because those three items are limited. And when you're using them on those types of people, you're wasting and you're taking them away from the positive people and the positive decisions and behaviors and actions you can take in this world. So before we sign off, One last piece of advice that I will share for the second time today. And I want to thank my son Dawson for this one. When you eliminate the sheep in your life, you get to spend more time with the lions. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to listen to the Bamboo Lab podcast. It's an honor to speak with you each week. And next week, we'll be back with more guests, and we have an amazing lineup coming up. I'm very happy, very pleased with some of the amazing, honored guests we have that have agreed and are excited to come on and share some life experiences with you, their their human interest story, as well as some of their amazing wisdom. Please get out there and look for us. We are on just about every podcast platform, the Bamboo Lab podcast. Please find us, download, follow, rate us. And share it with three other people. Let them think. Let them take it and think what they uh, see what they think about it. Because the wisdom that my guests share on here, and sometimes the things that I get to say, I think are worth spreading around this great nation and across this great world of ours. If anyone knows anybody from the Antarctica, the continent of Antarctica, please let me know. That's the only continent we don't have followers on. So anyway, everyone out there, please have a blessed week. Get out there and sculpt your life. Take the time to, to strive every day to be a little better version of yourself. Go out there and show love and respect to others. And get out there and live consciously. You deserve it. 
Until next time, thank you for joining me on the Bamboo Lab podcast.